Imagine you are in the following scenario. You just came up with a great idea that will transform into a revolutionary business that will 100% work. Like most startups out there, your business is based on software. And you might spend a bit of time brainstorming stuff like the logo, the name of the business. However, when it comes to actually executing and creating the software, you find yourself stuck. I'm assuming that you already know how to code and you kind of have an idea of what technologies might be useful in this situation. However, choosing a good technology stack for your startup is a crucial part that most people don't actually really think about. And the reason for that is because a poorly chosen tech stack can slow down scaling and be a nightmare to fix later on. I've never actually created a startup myself and I probably never will for personal reasons. However, I do have some experience choosing technologies that I like to use in my projects. And for every single project that I've built in the past, I always try to outweigh the benefit of using a technology with the actual cost of development. And cost in this case is not only actual money that you're using, it's actual development time, uh, time you spend debugging stuff, and also the cost of potentially if this side project end up becoming a startup, how easy would it be to actually hire other developers? Therefore, in this video, I will go over which technologies I would personally choose if I were to start a startup today. So first of all, I'm going to start by talking about what technologies I would use for the front end. For those who don't know, the front end is just the visual part of your application. So like in a website, it would be the actual website, like the buttons, the, the, the pages, whatever you see. So taking into account that most startups are either a website or a mobile app, I'm only going to be talking about both of them. So for a mobile app, I would use React Native. The reason why I would use React Native is because if you're a startup, you really need to consider a cost and React Native is the best in this requisite. For the longest time, people who had mobile app startups, they had to hire two different teams, one to build the app for Android and one to build the app for iOS. But with the introduction of cross-platform development, it became a lot easier and cheaper to produce those map mobile apps. With React Native, you can build an app for iOS and Android really quick, really fast, and at the same time. And the reason why I would choose React Native instead of something like Flutter, which also does the exact same thing, is the hiring aspect of it. If you want to develop in Flutter, you would have to use another programming language called Dart. While if you're developing in React Native, you can use either JavaScript or TypeScript, which are very well-known languages that most developers out there already know. Not to mention, the market already demands a lot of React developers. Therefore, if you really need to hire a React Native developer, you don't really need to find someone who's specialized in React Native. A React developer can very easily and very quickly change between programming in React to programming in React Native. And the more people exist in the market for a specific technology, the cheaper it is to hire them. So for a mobile app, I would 100% choose React Native. The cons for it is that uh, to some extent, it might be a little bit slow, but don't get too deep into it because it is slow, but only if you reach to a certain point. I would say React Native is only slow in situations like apps that use billions of users every single day or certain screens in your app that require millions and billions of requests at each minute. For a startup who is just trying to scale up, it is completely viable to use React Native and it, it is the best option in my opinion. However, if you're building a website, as you may expect, I would say you should use React.js. React.js is a single page application JavaScript library which, which allows you to build your whole project in a very simple way. React is definitely the most in-demand JavaScript framework slash library out there and I definitely recommend using it. I have thousands of tutorials using React and there's a reason for it. I'm definitely not saying that the other frameworks are bad. If you are already used to using Angular and Vue, there's literally no reason to go for React because of it. If you're starting from ground zero and you have to choose one of those technologies, there's no way I'm gonna say something other than React. And the same point that I mentioned earlier that React Native developers are cheaper to hire goes the same way with normal React.js. But one caveat is that I wouldn't recommend for a startup just using React on its own. I would also recommend using Next.js as a lightweight server-side rendering framework for your application. For those who watch my videos and my tutorials may find it kind of weird that I'm talking about Next.js because I only have one or two tutorials on Next.js and I usually just make tutorials on React on its own. However, one of the main points of a startup is to get customers. And if you have a website, in order to get those customers, you need to have a really, really good SEO. And the problem with single page applications like React is that it is horrible for search engines. The reason for that is because React generates all the HTML, all the structure, all the text through JavaScript. So before you actually click on the website and actually download all the JavaScript, 
there's nothing on the page, which means that web crawlers from search engines like Google are unable to actually see what is inside of the website. So keywords and titles are unable to be found. And for a startup, that's horrible because you really, really need to be one of the first websites whenever someone searches for certain keywords that are related to your startup. So with Next.js, it actually renders everything from the server and it allows you to have the kind of search engine optimization that you wouldn't with a normal React application. I would definitely recommend you spending some time trying to see if it is more beneficial for you to use Next.js instead of normal React. But in my case, if I were to start a startup, which includes a website, I wouldn't think twice and use Next.js. Now for the language that I would use in, in my front end, no matter if it is a, re, a mobile app or a normal website, there's no doubt I would use TypeScript. Now, if you're using Next.js, uh, it already comes with TypeScript. However, if you're using normal React or React Native, you have the option of using JavaScript instead of TypeScript. On one hand, JavaScript is more well known and many people might not know TypeScript. But on the other hand, you need to use TypeScript. There's no way you're going to use JavaScript for an actual business. TypeScript is a lot safer than JavaScript because you need to define your types when you're coding. And that prevents so many bugs throughout your application because you know exactly what you're receiving and what you're producing. Not to mention, despite it taking more time to, to, to write your code because you need to define your types, you need to define different structures, define enums, interfaces, all that kind of stuff, it saves you time in the long run. If you have been using TypeScript for a while now, you'll know exactly what I mean because you have no idea how many times uh, you've run into a bug and you have no idea how to solve. And the reason for why you have no idea how to solve is because you're using JavaScript. JavaScript will allow you to do absolutely anything you want to do with your variables, which is good when you're the only person using your application and you know exactly what you're going to do. But when you have a product that is being used by millions of different people in many different ways, you need to put a lot of effort into preventing errors from happening. So if you're building a startup and you're using a front end, no questions asked, I would use TypeScript. Now, if you're interested in knowing other smaller stuff, like other libraries, other small technologies that I would use in a front end, I'm just going to list them right over here. Uh, they are just some things that I, I don't think it's meant it's worth mentioning and spending some time talking about them. But they're just a, a group of different technologies and external libraries that I would use in my application, which are not part of the main section of the stack. Now that we spend some time talking about the front end, let's get into the back end because the back end is actually really important as well. And it's kind of controversial because there's a lot more options for the back end than for the front end. So I really want to spend some time talking about it. Okay, so for the back end, I would start by using Node.js and Express. Now, the first thing I really want to say is using Node.js and Express might be trendy, but it is the best option for a startup, in my opinion. It is well known that Node.js and Express is not good for larger companies like Facebook and Google because it's just not as scalable as other lower level languages. Node.js uses JavaScript or TypeScript, which most people already know that it isn't one of the fastest languages. It is actually very, very high level. It abstracts a lot of the logic that lower level languages have. And for that reason, it is a lot slower. One of the most predominant characteristic of a fast language is how closely their data types are related to the actual machine language data types. And for lower languages like Go, C, C++, it is as similar as you can get without actually making everything be very super complicated. In those lower level languages, you have to define stuff like pointers, addresses, the types are very closely related to the machine types. Whilst in a language like JavaScript and even TypeScript, you don't have any of that. A good comparison is the fact that in normal C, a string is defined as an array of characters. While in JavaScript, there's not even a character data type. All that logic is abstracted behind the programming language in itself. And I believe in JavaScript, there's only like six different data types. Whilst in machine code, it obviously has a lot more. However, it still makes sense to use JavaScript and TypeScript for the backend because the drawbacks of using this language is not well seen in a startup. If the startup actually works and in the future you need to scale a lot, you probably will already have money to hire new developers that can use other languages like C++ or even Go in this case. Now, there's also the same thing I mentioned with React. You'll find thousands of React uh, of Node.js developers and Express developers out there. It is a very well known combination, so you will have no trouble trying to find developers. Now, similar to the front end, I would use TypeScript, not JavaScript, and I already explained why, uh, but in this case, it is also essential, especially Actually, in the backend, actually, I would say the backend is actually more important. You would need to use TypeScript. You need to be sure of what you're dealing with. You need to be sure of what types you're working with. So using TypeScript is a crucial part. Now for the database, it is kind of controversial. It, it kind of depends on the use case, but 
in most projects out there, I would say 95% of the time I would use, I would use MySQL as the relational database management system over other options. Now I know that MongoDB is trending and that a lot of people will feel the need to use it. However, I can't stay away from the fact that having a relational database is very important. Now, don't get me wrong. Both of them will basically do the same thing. Both of them can be used for most situations. I have a lot more experience with working with relational databases compared to no SQL databases. Now that doesn't mean that in your case it will be exactly the same. Now, since this is a video of my experience and what I would do, I just want to let you know that I would use MySQL. However, again, choose whatever you feel more comfortable with and whatever will be more useful for your situation. Now, one of the last things that I'm going to mention for the back end, and this will actually go for the front end as well, it will intertwine between both of them, is the fact that I would actually choose GraphQL over REST. I have a lot of videos on GraphQL and that might pass the impression that I love the technology, I love using GraphQL over REST, and that's actually 100% right. <laughs> I used to use REST for every single project. If you go to my website, you'll see that most of my projects actually don't use GraphQL, but when I took the first step to learn the technology and understand what are the benefits of using it, I fell in love. GraphQL definitely has a steeper learning curve. However, I definitely think the benefit outweighs the cost. And in this tech stack, I definitely try to measure uh, the learning curve for every single technology and try to balance it out. Not to mention security wise, if you're using GraphQL, you need to have a very, very specific schema that is validated at each request. GraphQL definitely adds a layer of security that you wouldn't have with REST and I would 100% use it in every project. So this is the last part that I would actually add. This is the last thing that I would add. And here are all the other technologies, smaller technologies, similar to what I did in the front end that I would use, but they're not worth spending some time mentioning. They're all really good, but there are definitely alternatives to them. And they're just technologies that I am used to, but I just wanted to leave, leave the list here because I know how many people are interested in this kind of stuff. I was really excited to make this video because this is something that I myself am interested in. You have no idea how much time I've spent just researching different tech stacks, just researching what are the new hot technologies that I can use to a project. So for that reason, I found that it might be valuable for you guys if I made a video on this. Now take everything that I said with a grain of salt. First of all, you might be watching this video in the future, so technologies might have changed, stuff might have happened that I have no idea about. So if for some reason you're watching this video and now Angular dominates the world, use Angular. And the final thing I also want to talk about is deploying. Since I myself am not that experience with deployment, especially for stuff like startups, I would just like to add a small opinion on it. If I were to deploy a startup, I would use a service like AWS a billion percent. I know it will be expensive. I 100% know that. However, it is the most reliable out there. I believe more than 70% of the internet is currently being hosted by AWS. That just goes to show that AWS is extremely reliable. You only use for what you actually get. So for some cases, it is actually worth it cost wise to use AWS. Now again, take this with a grain of salt. I'm not that used to deployment. I've never deployed a startup before. I've deployed stuff to AWS, but not even close enough to the scale of an actual startup. So with that in mind, I hope you guys gain value from this video and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I post two to three times a week and I would massively appreciate it if you guys could help grow the channel. I've been putting a lot of effort into the channel so I would massively appreciate it if you guys could support it. If you're interested in joining the membership program, just click the join button down below. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting two to three times a week and I would massively appreciate it and I see you guys next time.